So this is a uh, portable air conditioning unit that I got off Gumtree for about 50 quid a few weeks ago and it's been absolutely lovely in the uh, hot weather we've had recently. It's a Matsui brand but I believe it's quite a generic design. Um, some of the sort of own brand ones from the likes of B&Q are very very similar inside, they're just a different colour. So aside from looking this sort of manky uh, nicotine brown colour and the uh, front panel control being a bit of a disgusting old design, uh, it works just fine. What would be nice though is if I could control it remotely because at the moment you can only control it from the front panel and it usually sits in the other corner of the room. So if you pop out all of these screws around the outside and then a few more around here you can separate the back of the case and take that off. Watch the uh, drain plug will come out when you do that so make sure you drain it first. And then you can pop the front part of the case off of the frame and then you should be able to pop out the front panel. Now I've already taken the circuit board off of this but the circuit board did connect to this cable in here. So we'll have a look at the circuit board now. Okay, here we go. So I've got the uh, board hooked up in the little vise and we'll give it 5 volts. Now I'm just powering it across the uh, main input capacitor there. So because it's not connected to the rest of the air conditioner, we've got an uh, E1 error and the error light's flashing. Uh, one thing that I did notice while we were doing this, if you uh, hold down the on-off button while you power it on, the front panel board will actually run through a self-test. So hopefully this might be a bit of a giveaway for uh, how those LEDs are actually being driven. So we've got a few things on this board, there's the uh, connector here that connects to another little daughter board that's got some relays and uh, the thermistor on it to control the actual power side of the air conditioner. Uh, we've got a, this is made by a Hynix, it's an 8-bit microcontroller and um, that's just running their firmware. A little 3-pin resonator, uh, that's the input cap there and this here is a shift register and what they're doing is they're using this shift register to drive all of the LEDs on this board. So that just basically allows them to save some pins on their microcontroller. So they only need a couple of pins to drive the shift register and then the shift register can just scan through all of the LEDs on this board. You can see we've got some uh, little tactile buttons down here. We've got a two digit uh, seven segment display and this just displays the uh, sort of set point temperature or the room temperature depending which mode it's in. And we've got an IR receiver. Now in an ideal world, um, this would have come with the remote and that would have been perfect. Um, replacement remotes for this are about 45 quid and unfortunately I've not been able to find much online about codes. Now what I guess you could do is buy the remote, uh, rip the codes off of it and then return the remote. But uh, we thought we'd have a different approach of hacking this. So you might be able to see this trace that runs down here, around here, squiggles around, and then between all these buttons here. Now this is a common rail that's linking to the right hand side of all of these buttons. They're all common together. Now at first I thought, okay great, that's probably a ground or the positive of the power supply. Um, there's probably a pin on the microcontroller and that's being pulled up or pulled down. Let's say it's pulled up and then when you push one of the buttons it drags that pulled up voltage down to ground and the microcontroller can sense that you push the button. That would be a normal, very uh, basic use of a push button with a microcontroller, something you might see with a basic Arduino uh, example. So that would be really easy for us to tap into, we could just pick up on the other pin and drive it high or low with, a, uh, with another microcontroller. But unfortunately it wasn't that simple and that didn't quite work. And let's have a quick look into some of the quite interesting techniques that they've used here to further reduce the pin count. So we're looking at the back side of the board now and uh, I've already done the modifications to it I'm afraid but I'll talk you through sort of how it worked before and what we've done to it. So you can see the little pairs of contacts down here from the buttons and the left side of each of these was commoned up on the other side and that left side here 
comes out. So all of these are commoned on the other side of the board. And here that left side comes out and it goes through a 100k ohm resistor up to the positive voltage rail. So that common rail is pulled up to plus 5 volts through a fairly high resistance. So you can see the left side of this one, the uh, common rail, there's another little trace that comes off here and it pops through a via, uh, goes through the other side of the board and then pops out again here and goes through R216. And that's a 1k ohm resistor. Then it goes into this pin of the chip. So the common rail was pulled up and the common rail is being measured by the chip which I thought was a little bit strange. So let's have a look at the other sides of these uh, switches. Now if you look carefully, this LED and the pin of this switch are both actually connected to the same pin of the shift register. So what's actually going on here is they're using the shift registers to scan all of these LEDs. On the other side of the board, the uh, positive, the anode side of the LED is uh, common and connected to a positive rail. And the shift registers pulling the negative side down to turn the LEDs on. So as it scans through, uh, each LED that it wants to turn on, it will drag that pin down uh, for a, an amount of time for it to become visible, and then it will move on to the next one. And what they're doing is using that sequence of scanning through the LEDs to also scan through the buttons. So it's dragging this side of the button down, which when the button is not pressed would have no impact on it. But when the button is pressed, it would drag that common 5 volt rail down to ground. Thanks to this high value resistor here, it would be able to drag that down quite easily to such a level where the microcontroller would be able to sense it again. So what the microcontroller is looking for is as it scans through each LED or each switch on the shift register, if it also senses that that 5 volt rail is being dragged down at the same time, it knows which LED it's looking at, it knows that it's either being dragged down or not and it can determine which buttons are being pressed. But actually scanning the switches with basically the same pins that you're using to scan the LEDs is quite a, uh, quite a clever technique. So if we quickly draw out a simple circuit diagram of uh, what's going on here with the switches and the shift register, uh, I'll be able to show you what I've done with these transistors to be able to uh, make us trigger these button presses from a, from a microcontroller. So looking at the board, this is how I think this circuit works. So off this plus 5 volt rail, there's this 100k ohm resistor that we saw, and that's connected to this sort of common bus between all of the switches. And tapping off of that is the 1k ohm resistor that uh, goes off to the microcontroller to sense that. So that's a microcontroller input for the microcontroller on the board. And then we've got the shift register here and all of the LEDs. So the LEDs are sort of commoned up. Imagine that uh, that's connected to there. All the LED uh, anodes are commoned up, and then the shift register pulls each one of these down to ground when it wants to turn the LED on. So when it wants to turn this one on, it will pull that one down to ground, and that one will light up because current will flow through it, and same for this one. Now at the same time, when that's being pulled down to ground, and this circuit's open, this will still be sitting here at about 5 volts, because it's being pulled up to 5 volts through this 100k, and no current's flowing through any of these because they're turned off. Now if you close that switch, when this one's being pulled down, it will drag this voltage down to ground. And then they can use this, uh, this connection here with the 1k ohm resistor to measure that voltage and see when it's being pulled down. So when it knows it's turning LED1 on and this voltage is being pulled down, then switch 1 must be being pressed. And if, if that's not the case and it's turning LED2 on and it's being dragged down, then switch number 2 must be turning it on. Now if we were to uh, tap into this signal here directly and drag it down manually, we'd have to observe the timing of the shift register, see when the appropriate switch is being scanned, and then quickly sort of pull this down so that it would pick up that that switch is being registered. But we don't really need to do that, because what we can do is assume that when the shift register is scanning this one, this side is going to be negative, and this side is going to be positive, and we can pop a NPN transistor across it.
So when this is being scanned, this pin here is negative and this side here is positive. When we on when we're applying a, a low value, a, a sort of zero volts to the base, this isn't going to conduct because these two voltages are still going to be about the same if this one's zero volts or negative and this one's zero volts. And then if we turn this on and make this more positive than this side by a few volts, the transistor will turn on. So with a reasonable amount of current flowing through this, it will drag this uh, voltage down quite easily with the 100k resistor there, and we'll be at, and the microcontroller will register that. And as soon as it moves on and scans to the next one, uh, this voltage isn't going to be much higher than this one anymore, and it will turn off and it will stop affecting it. So we could do a similar thing for all of the switches that we want to control on this device. And then to power our microcontroller, we can pick up on the 5 volts off this board, we can pick up on the ground off this board, and then we can just literally connect the I.O. pin of our microcontroller through something like a 10k ohm resistor to the base of this transistor. So what I've done is I've soldered a surface mount BC847 series uh, general purpose NPN transistor in here. You can see we've got the collector here connected to the common side of the switches and the emitter of the transistor connected to the side of the switch which goes off to the shift register. And then on the base of the transistor we've just got a 10k ohm resistor and a little bit of uh, enameled copper wire that goes off over here. And I've just soldered a bit of a right angle header on here. I've picked up the positive and negative from the uh, IR transmitter and that, well that also goes off to sort of everything else. And I've got three spare pins that I've connected the three bases of my three transistors to. I'm not controlling uh, all of the buttons on this because all I really want to do is power it on and off and adjust the temperature. I'm not too worried about the modes and everything. And same story on the up and down buttons for the temperature. I've uh, popped the transistors across them and uh, ran some wires off to that header through some resistors for the bases. So I've got the uh, controller board hooked up to our uh, microcontroller board. I'm going to be using a uh, ESP8266 based board. This is a like Node MCU V3 clone from China. They're about four quid. Uh, plus five volts in the ground from the board hooked up to the uh, ground and the VN of this. So the ESP8266 is a uh, three or 3.3 volt uh, logic chip. And uh, this has got a built-in regulator to take that five volts down. And then I've connected the uh, bases of our three uh, transistors through the resistors that you saw to uh, D7, D6 and D5. So let's uh, pop this all back together in the AC unit and then we can have a look at the code. So I've just mounted the uh, Node MCU board on some little standoffs uh, with the USB connector exposed in case I ever want to reprogram it. And uh, that's just going to mount back in there. So let's put the connector back in and get it going. Okay, so let's try turning it on with the web interface. Excellent. Now the uh, display on the unit's reading the uh, room temperature, whereas this is just saying the uh, set temperature. So we can uh, adjust that. Happy days! So the Node MCU board is programmed by the Arduino IDE in this case. I'll stick a link in the description for uh, some instructions on how to get the basics set up. Um, and I'll take you for a quick walk through the code. So you set your SSID and password for the Wi-Fi. Uh, here we set up the pin numbers for uh, all of the different pins that get used. I don't actually use the fan speed and the uh, timer pin, uh, or the mode pin actually for that matter. So we're just doing power uh, up and down pins so that's the uh, that's the mapping for those pins and the software should work if you wanted to add those three in uh, straight out of the box when you switch the uh, aircon unit on it actually always when you switch on on the mains at least it always sets itself to 24 degrees c by default so uh, that's what that is set there we set up all of the io pins as uh, outputs and uh, write them all low by default. Uh, then it connects to the uh, 
Wi-Fi network and it will uh, give you the IP address over the serial port. So when the first time you run it, you just open the serial monitor and it will tell you the IP address. You can also look that out through your router's configuration page. So it sits there in this loop and waits for a Wi-Fi client to collect. And when it does get a client connect, it reads in the request and basically sees what's in the path of the request. So the uh, API, if you'd even call it that, for this is really straightforward. If you look at uh, some of the links down here, uh, there's just AC equals power, mode, speed, timer, up, down. And it's just an if statement for each of these. And it will just write the appropriate pin high for 500 milliseconds and then write it low again. And once it's done the pin operation, it will then respond with the web page. So that's the uh, start of the response uh, there, just telling the web browser what, what the response actually is. And then we start writing uh, HTML. All of this is just uh, copied and pasted. If you open up your code in Notepad++, you can hit this button here, show all characters. And that uh, turns on displaying these non-printable characters, the carriage return and the line feed. If you uh, hit Control F, you can search for uh, stroke R stroke N, which is this uh, carriage return and line feed. You can see it picks up on each one of those. And you can replace the end of that, the end of each line, with the quote and close bracket, a new line, and then the start of the client print line. And that really quickly adds in all of these uh, sort of things that are wrapped around it to print it all out. Um, so that will do all of them apart from the start of the top line and the end of the bottom line, you just put those in manually. So that's all cut and pasted in and then sandwiched in the middle of it all is this little bit of code that generates the uh, seven segment displays over here. So that just wraps up the end of the HTML and sending the uh, reply out and this is the bit of code that generates the seven segment display. So you pass it the uh, number which is the temperature in this case and the uh, sort of like a, a pointer to the Wi-Fi client so that it knows what it's printing back to. It pads out the uh, number to two digits and sticks it inside a character array. So you've got uh, basically just two characters that you're interested in. And then it loops through uh, two iterations of those characters. The first character and the second character are generated as SVGs. And there's just a load of case statements for which lines to draw for the seven segment displays. And it just does that twice, once for each digit. And that, uh, that kind of wraps the code up, really. I put a lot of these uh, status indicators on here just to make it look the same as the front panel. They're not actually implemented at this stage. And the seven segment display, there's no actual direct feedback back to the seven segment display on the front of the uh, AC unit. But because we know it always switches on at 24 degrees, as long as you're not using the front panel and you're only using the up and down buttons on this, uh, it shouldn't really get out of sync, and even if it does, you can just cycle the power to it or not worry. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. If this is the first video you've seen from us, uh, have a little poke around on the channel and see if there's anything else you like.